Hello and welcome to this tutorial for the board game Code 3. This is a cooperative game so you'll be working together to beat the game. It also has a few errors and I'll help you with those in this video. Here's how it goes. You are going to play until all either win the game or the game beats you and you all lose the game. You win the game by successfully finishing the story. During the setup, you choose as a group which story you want to play. If you go through the entire story and make it to the end, you immediately win the game. That's the only way to win. But there are four ways to lose the game. You lose the game when the little cube on this track reaches the end. Or... You lose when a player is supposed to place one of these little pink cards on the board, but the deck has run out. You also lose the game if somebody needs to draw one of these internal affairs interview cards, but there are none left. Or you lose the game when a card specifically tells you you lose. So, how do you get through a story? That's easy. Just follow the instructions on the story cards. Here is the first card of the easiest story, Cat Burglar. It says that you have to place these two specific cards on the board. As soon as you have dealt with these cards, you can move on to the next story card. At some point, you will reach the last story card and that will tell you how you win the game. Next, how do you play the game? You keep going around the table, taking turns one by one. Here's what you do when it's your turn. When it's your turn, you go through five steps. Step one. You can take up to three actions and maybe pay these clock tokens to do even more. Step two. You have to take two of these little pink cards and place them on the board. These are smaller crimes that you also have to deal with while you're going through the big crime story. Step 3. Shuffle all the cards that you have open in front of you back into your own deck and deal yourself some new cards. Step 4. If you want you can try to get some of these clock tokens. Step 5. Check if you don't have too many resources, because if you do, you have to discard some. Let's go through those again in a bit more detail, but you can also always look at the information card that tells you how your own turn goes. Step 1. At the start of your turn, you already have some open cards in front of you, that you can use. You begin your turn by taking up to three actions. I'll tell you all the options you have in a moment, but they are written on the other side of your information cards. As soon as you have done all three actions, this part is over. But if you want to do more, and you happen to have these clock tokens, you can spend them now. You can do one additional action for each token you spend. When you're done, you move on to step two. Step two is placing these little pink cards on the game board, the city. You have to place two of them, but before you do that, you have to look at the pink cards that are already on the board. They have blue cubes on them. You have to remove one little blue cube from each card. If it happens to be the last cube, that means you didn't deal with this crime on time and you have to pay the price for that. I'll explain that later. Then, just take the top card from the small deck and look at it. If the card shows a number, then place that card on the city tile that has the same number. If the card shows a question mark, roll the 12-sided die and place the card on the city tile with the same number that you rolled. As soon as you've placed the card, you look at this other number. This means you have to place this many little blue cubes onto this card. That's how much time you have to deal with this. And then you do all of this again with the second card. You have to place two cards. 
Step three. You have the cards open in front of you that you had at the start of your turn, and it's possible that during your turn you've added one or more cards. Gather them and shuffle them back into your own deck. When you're done, you start dealing cards to yourself. You keep going until you have three cards with a character on it. There are cards that don't have a character on it. You just keep them open and keep drawing cards from your own deck. You might have five cards or six or more. You just have to keep flipping over cards until you have three character cards. The cards that don't have a character on them will have instructions, and you have to follow those instructions when you place it in front of you. Some cards even say that you can use them during the turn of a different player. This game is all about teamwork. <clears throat> Step 4. If you want, this is the moment where you can try to get some of those clock tokens, the overtime tokens. You already know that you can use these to do more actions when it's your turn. It's basically gambling. Take any little blue cubes that you have in your own collection. It's up to you how many. Then take one of the white dice and roll it. It will show an icon on it, but there are also little numbers. If the number isn't higher than the number of cubes you've put in for the bet, then you can take one overtime token from the supply. If you have more little cubes and you feel like going again, you can do this. You can try to win these tokens as often as you can and like. You do lose all the cubes that you put in for the bet. Step 5. Count up all your resources. Your overtime tokens, plus your little blue cubes, plus your donuts and your coffee. If you have more than 7 in total, you have to discard down to 7. You can't have more than 7 resources in total. After that, your turn is over and the player to your left goes next. And that's it. This is how you play Code 3. Now, let's have a look at all the options you can choose from when it's your turn to do up to three actions. When it's your turn, you can choose to move. As an action, you could move your own little police car two spaces. For example, like this. Or, as an action, you can move your own car to any space you like by spending a donut and a coffee. Or, you can even use an action to move a random black police car to wherever you like. <coughs> when it's your turn, you can also choose to take a break. That means doing nothing, and for that, you can take one resource of choice, so a donut or a coffee or two blue cubes. When it's your turn, you can spend an action on dealing with one of the current crimes, so either the small crimes that are on the little pink cards, or the bigger crimes that are on the red cards, or the big story cards. And those were all the actions you can choose from when it's your turn. Don't forget that after having done three actions, you can still spend overtime tokens to do another action. And all the actions are written on your information card. But, back to dealing with crimes. Let me explain how that goes, because it is a big part of playing this game. I'll start with the pink ones, the smaller crimes. When you want this card to go away... All you have to do is have your own little police car somewhere around the tile that the card is on. Then, as an action, you say you're going to deal with this card. It's called Dispo. For this, you'll need the other dice. You can always use the black die. That is connected to the police chief that you have in the game. In this case, it's this one, Chief Jackson. And you need the white dice. To see how many of these white dice you can use, you look at your own character cards that you have open in front of you. They will say a number on the left side, somewhere in the middle, here. 
<coughs> Count up all the numbers, and that's how many white dice you can use. Plus, you can add one white die for every random black police card that is also there at the same city tile. Look at the card. These are the icons you need to roll to be successful. Roll the dice. If you got all the icons that were needed, you have succeeded. For what happens then, you look at the win icon on the pink card. And then this information card could tell you what that icon means. Plus, you can also keep any little blue cubes that were still left on this card before putting it on the discard pile. These cubes are yours now. If you didn't get all the icons that were needed, see if you can do anything that helps. First, the black die. You roll that one as well, and the police chief card will tell you what that icon will do for you. Maybe that will help you win. And you or the other players might have a card open in front of them that can also do something to help. If you've tried everything and still didn't succeed, then you have lost this dispo. Either way, the card is removed from the game. Look at the other icon, and then on the other side of the information card to see what happens when you have failed. You might remember that during every player's turn, these little blue cubes are removed from every card. If you remove the last cube from the card, this crime has come and gone without any help from the police. You discard the card and move the cube up one space on this crime rate tracker. The city has become more criminal and you lose the game when the cube reaches the end of this track. One detail about dealing with these pink cards. If you can see that the card needs four icons to be successfully removed, but you know you're never going to win because you can't roll more than three white dice, you're not allowed to do this. You may only dispo if you know for sure there is a chance you can win. Moving on. Dealing with the bigger crimes, the ones that need to be dealt with to move the story along. Some of those will be on these little red cards. They're almost the same as the pink cards. And some crimes are written on the big story cards. Instead of icons, it needs a particular combination of witnesses and or evidence tokens to be solved. To get those tokens you need to reach into these bags. One is for evidence, and one is for witnesses. Before you do that, make sure your own police car is parked next to a place that has a crime scene token. This information card will tell you how many of each there is in the bag. There's a little mistake on this witnesses card. The name of this blue token with the shirt is actually Average Joe. Anyway, here's how that works. You know this number on the left side of your character cards is for how many white dice you're allowed to roll. <coughs> this number on the other side is for how many tokens you're allowed to pull out of a bag during your turn. No matter how many tokens you pull out, you may only keep one to place on the story card. One token per action. But if you happen to draw another token that you know you're going to need, it's possible that you have a card uh, that says you can put the token in lock up. According to the rules, there should be a card that is called lock up, but that card was never made. So just put those drawn tokens somewhere on the table. They can stay out of the bag until you move on to the next story card. Then they have to go back into the bag. And this is where I end my explanation. 
There are more things like good cards and bad cards that you can run into during your mission, but those cards will speak for themselves. They all have text on them to explain how they work. Just follow the instructions and look at any of the available information cards. They explain a lot, so you don't always have to take out the rulebook. I hope you feel like you get how Code 3 is played, and that you'll have a nice time with it. Thank you for watching, feel free to leave a comment, and see you for the next one.